Do you ever watch the news and you think, where did America go? What happened? <laughs> what, what's happened to our world? I mean, if you just go back even a few years ago, it wasn't this crazy. Does the Bible talk about what's going on? It does, and it gives us great advice about how to survive what lies ahead. I'm Dan Wheeler, Brian Rowland, and Terry Steen are here. We form uh, Fearless Faith, and uh, this is our podcast, Finish Strong, so we're glad you joined us. Guys, it, it just, you know, I almost, every day when I click on my news feed, I'm almost afraid of what I'm going to read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's something we've been kind of beating the drum on, but it's so vital to our lives and to our future and to this world, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. And you're right, Dan. It's a, I've been gone for a while, and so I haven't even watched television in the news. I bet that was refreshing. <laughs> it, it really was. Yeah. You think about it, I didn't see a newspaper, yeah. didn't hear anything, and, and man, it's just... Um, it's amazing when you come back to and you turn it on this morning. Oh, man, we're, I'm, I'm kind of glad I missed a lot of it. Yeah. Hmm. You know, yeah. Uh, people are talking about artificial intelligence and that it could take over the world. It's like, what? Uh, we're living in the last days. I mean, it seems pretty apparent to me, guys. The Bible says, as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And, of course, they were just kind of partying it up, you know, marrying, giving in marriage and celebrating. But they were... There were evil times. And 2 Timothy 3, 1 says, perilous times will come. These are perilous times. Right. Yeah, yeah. In fact, if you read on further, it says, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. unthankful, unholy. I mean, does that ring a bell as to our culture today? Yeah, especially. unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control. I mean, it goes on and on and really gives a good description of where our culture is today. It sounded like that back in the 70s and 80s, too, but it's, <laughs> it's nothing like it's compared to today. When you look at it, you go, the cow kind of gone this far. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the hippie movement was really mild compared to yeah, Exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, we could be hurtling toward the end of human history. And, and because of that, mm -hmm. Satan is so active. He wants to take us all out yep. of our game. Yeah. He attacks us. So we're going to talk about how we can prepare for that, how we armor up for battle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he knows scripture, right? He knows how it ends, Satan. He knows. Mm -hmm. and, and he's trying to just wreak as much havoc as possible. Yep. He uses scripture. Remember remember Jesus in the wilderness? He, mm -hmm. he used scripture to try to trick Jesus. Yep. So he knows yeah. exactly what he's doing. Yeah. 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 Uh, I see that same thing that that he, he used scripture, but didn't quite use it right. <laughs> he would just use it with the parts that he wanted to. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. Jesus would go, no, 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 no. The, the Bible, this is what the word says, or, or yeah. God said. You know, cause Which right is what up. Christians are doing today. And they have to. And they have to. That's why they have to have the word in them. That's why they have to be prepared and know how to respond. And it's uh, it's true. And the, it says that, you know, the, to get the word in you, to, to have it burned in your heart, you know, so that you, you can... Uh, be able to defend the faith. And yeah. We have to do that now more than ever. Brian, what are you seeing what's going on in society that that really shows that we've kind of lost our way? Well, um, not kind of. We have. Yeah. You, know, you have right here where the enemy is active because of society, but just because these, they rejected God and they've rejected God in a lot of different areas and, and evil exists in pornography and sexual morality. Uh, there's there's opens to sa Satan worship in, in high schools now. Yeah, um, gender crazy. confusion, abortion, critical race theory. You know, all this is going on. You know, it reminds me, guys, of uh, I, I think I, we I said it before in other other um, podcast of Nikita Khrushchev when I was a kid, and I saw him uh, at the at the United Nations pounding his shoe uh, on the podium, saying, "We will bury you from within." Yeah. Think, how is he going to bury us from within? We're America, you know. They're, yeah. How are they going to get in here and bury us from within? But it's not just Russia. I mean, China is taking on this mantra and everybody else where they're going to tear us apart from within. And they start by tearing apart our family. At least that's what Satan's doing. He's taking that on, too. We're going to tear apart the family. We take the father out of the family. And then we're going to watch this thing just crumble. 
We're going to watch all this happen. And when it starts with that, it leads to other things where people have, they have no true north. They have no way and no guidance in where they're going. And then they fall into these things of sexual morality and pornography. Pornography is rampant. And it's, yeah. it's more, I think it's almost being selfish. These people that they're just good doing this just to have pleasure for themselves with just watching something, you know, and it's just, it's just not right. All this that has happened uh, today and, and with the gender confusion on this led to that. It started, I really believe it starts on the pornography end of it and gets into sexual morality. And now you get into the gender confusion and what's going on in that. And where, as I, somebody mentioned yesterday that, uh, a, a girl came home or a little kid came home from school and said, to, I think it was a little boy came home from school and said, hey, mom and dad, I just found out I could be a girl. I mean, how, how does how does that happen? Well, they're making society? it cool and they're yeah. watching these videos on TikTok and they're feeding it to them. Yep. Uh, this is the cool thing. I read about a, a guy who had, uh, you know, uh, crossed over and he started putting on lipstick, started getting all these likes, wore a dress, got more likes and he felt loved. But uh -huh. now he wants to re, yeah. you know, what do you call yeah. it? D, D trans or something. Yeah, D trans. So yeah. Come, wants to come back. Right. But, it, you know, it's, it's all rebellion against God and saying, God, you don't know what you're doing. We're going to do it our way. It's all rebellion against God. It's the feel good society, which you just said, Dan. It's people that, they're, they're, you know, they're, they want to feel good about themselves and they're not getting it from someplace, from home or someplace else. So they're doing something to grab attention. And that attention grabbing is taking them in a total different direction in which Satan can use that. Because Satan is the author of confusion. And he wants yeah. to confuse you. And he wants to have you spinning around and not knowing what to believe. Right. And then you talk about tearing apart from the inside. You look at our country mm -hmm. and you look at the various states and the liberal states and the conservative states. And I, I just read this week. Three different states, California passed a law that 12 year olds can yeah. legally leave their parents for a state group house. Oh, my God. And all they need is a signature of a mental health uh, counselor. Isn't if they that get right? that signed, if they go to a counselor, get it signed, at 12 years old, they can legally go away to a safe house and, and the, parent, the parents have that. the parents have no say parents have no say in it oh my goodness 12. And, then in, and then in washington it's very similar they now have these runaway they can hide from their parents and washington's passing a bill that's going to allow that and then oregon has, uh, if you've heard that case where the Christian lady wanted to adopt, yeah, yes. yeah, I they did. would not let her because she oh. was not open to the transgender agenda. Yeah. So oh. because of that, here's a state that will not let a Christian person adopt a child. Hmm. And then you go over to Europe and Hungary is trying to put some stricter yeah. rules on, on some of the protect the laws protecting these kids and the rest of Europe is ganging up on them hmm. and trying to either make them change that or oust them from their union or it's just every time you hmm. read the news in this area it's a yeah. slippery slope and yeah. the devil's on the attack isn't he Terry and he knows each and every oh, one of us. He knows how that, to get that's to That's the truth. That's the truth. And that's something, like you, you said earlier, it's something that can slip up on us. If we're not strong in the word, mm -hmm. if we're not strong in our prayer life, if we're not walking with the power of the Holy Spirit in our life, the devil will come at us in our weakest moments. Mm -hmm. he'll, he'll get in there and trip us up. And once that first trip up happens, then you start feeling guilty or God won't forgive me. And then you feel distance from God and then you begin that slippery slope. And he has a way of doing that. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I yeah. guess that's one of the things that we <clears throat> need to do uh, in this podcast is just encourage people that there yeah. are many weapons and things that we can do to mm -hmm. overcome Satan. He may yeah. seem powerful, mm -hmm. but he is nowhere near well, the power of our God. We, we well, can take a leap from the Garden of Eden, too. It all mm -hmm. started back then when he convinced them that they can be like God. 
The devil mm-hmm. convinced Eve and then Adam they can be like God and they, you know, they, they're, they're going to get this wisdom. And people are like that today. They want to be little gods. That's what Scientology and all that's about. I'm, I'm, I'm Scientology. I'm sorry. The, the, um, uh, the, the thing we worked on. Dan, A the, new age. The new, new age. age. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All right. Everything's not kicking yes. in right now. Yes, all right. <laughs> but, but it's no all problem. about you know, yeah. being our little gods. And it, it is. Satan hasn't changed his game plan. Same lie. Mm-hmm. Yep, you know, yep. since the Garden of Eden. But, uh, you know, in Ephesians, um, it's interesting because the language used in Ephesians kind of is like we're preparing for battle. Mm-hmm. And the command is put on the full armor of God in Ephesians yeah. 6, 11. And eight, so yeah. the full armor, we're going to talk about that because this is what protects you. If you read, uh, yeah, 6, 10 through 18, finally be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Mm-hmm. He's coming after us, and we're not in a battle with flesh. We, we're in a battle with spiritual wickedness in high places. And, yeah. guys, where do you win that battle? You win that battle in prayer. Right. This, yeah. this is a spiritual battle. Yeah. It's You know, we wish all, all sometimes we could just take the devil and just beat the crap. You know? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but he makes you so mad. <laughs> uh, excuse yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's it's spiritual. Yeah, yeah, and it's not a matter of just ranting and raving. It's not a matter of getting with a group of other Christians and making a lot of noise. As much as it is being on your knees in your closet, mm-hmm. right, and drawing your power and your strength and your yeah. source from God and from his Holy Spirit, that's where we're really going to be able to put all the pieces of that armor on to be able to fight this fight. Mm -hmm. And you know, when when you look at our lives, guys, it's, it's hard to spend time in prayer. We have so many distractions. The other night, I thought I'd been praying for so long, and I looked, and it had been eight minutes. <laughs> I'm like, wow, Dan, you're quite the prayer warrior. But, you know, we really have to, you know, when we're in prayer and in God's presence, it should almost be as if we're not worried about time, we're not worried about our schedule. We're just, you know, we lose track yeah. of time. We're, we're so happy to be there. Yeah, yeah. So... It, it just is, you know, Brian, it, it seems like, you know, when the uh, author talks about the evil day so we can be ready for the evil day, uh, it's, it's, it seems like that day is today. I think that day is today. It's, our, it's already upon us. Um, so where do we go? I mean, <laughs> where, where do we take it? It's, it's on us. So how are we going to protect ourselves? And what's, what's, what is the Lord told us and instructed us to do on that. And of course, that is the full armor of God and what we've talked about. Um, come on, can I start with that? Can I yeah, let's go. Armor? You know, yeah. you start to start with the, uh, your, gird your loins, it says. And what exactly is that? That's just the beginning of it. And girding your loins is really immersing yourself in the word. So you, you're completely covered. Uh, in the word and, and Christ inside living inside you. I, I, I wrote a note down here where Ephesians 4, 20 and 21 it actually tells us that we're, we're learning Christ as the reality is in Jesus. This is how God lived in Jesus, even though he was here as a human being. And by studying the word and, and immersing ourselves in it, that puts us in that position that we're covered. And that's yeah. what I'm girding your loin, I think. It's just, it's, it's, that's the start of it. And yeah, then push I, other, other things for battle. But that, if you got that protection, that's your beginning protection that you don't want them to penetrate. I think of it as it's your center, your core. Mm-hmm. And you have to be, you know, didn't um, uh, soldiers in the old days, they'd tighten up uh, their kind of their girdle there right. around the yeah. center of the mm-hmm. of, of your being. But you have to be centered on it says gird your loins with what? With truth. With truth. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and the truth has to be at our core. Jesus said he's the way, the truth, and the life. We have to have his truth in us. I mean, I know we still have pretty strong abs. You know, our center is well, someone. But <laughs> pretty big if, abs. If, <laughs> if, if, you, if you hit me in the stomach, your fist wouldn't bounce back quite as far as it Yeah, does. exactly. So we may need a little help there with yeah. hurting. Um, yeah. But yeah, when you talk about truth, and we know that... So much of this world and our culture is playing games with truth. Right. And we know the importance of God's word to be truth. And 
everybody is asking what is truth. They think there's so many gray areas, and now you have these chat bots, you have this uh, artificial intelligence mm -hmm. that's really it's sneaking into the news and creating videos that people think are true and they're not true. Right. And then there's and then we don't know if it's a AI image or if it yeah. is truth really and now happened. the media is going to be so confusing it's only going to get worse as when this is introduced as if it isn't already confused the media exactly it's only going mean, to get where, worse where is truth yeah 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 and and that leads us into your next your next area terry about uh yeah, what's, the, what's the next next of piece of armor? Yeah, we the got chest, the you know, gird, I, gird our loins with truth. Yeah, this is my breastplate, and it needs some work. Also, I'm not. <laughs> yes, it does. Going to lie to you, but righteousness <laughs> covers the chest. It covers the heart. Yeah, the heart. So mm -hmm. important that we live a righteous life. That we live a life of integrity. You know, I was I was reading an article the other day about those that question Christianity and three of the top reasons that Christians question Christianity is human suffering, hypocrisy of religious people and conflict in the world. Well, we can't do too much about human suffering and about conflict in the world, but hypocrisy of religious people. Mm -hmm. If the yeah. Christian could live that righteous life, that would help reduce that. Those who have no faith, those who don't claim to be Christians, 42% of them say the largest reason is the hypocrisy of Christians. Now, you and I know that that's somewhat of a cop-out because yes. in reality, all Christians are hypocrites we're, in their we're eyes. Human. Because we're we fail, yeah. we're human. Right. Right. But I would say... It's so important that we make the effort, that we do our right. best to live in integrity, knowing yeah. people are watching our lives, knowing yeah. that we need to line up with God's word and do our best to live righteously. And that can happen with God's help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Boy, Brian, it's kind of scary. What if Terry's a chat bot? What if he's not really Terry? <laughs> Surely they could have made me better looking. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we all make those avatars online, right? Hey, time's going quickly. What's our next area, Terry? Well, peace. And mm. that's such a, you know, we all want peace. We mm. all worry. We're, we're all in turmoil. And he tells us to that our feet should be shod with preparation of the gospel of peace. That gospel brings peace. Jesus brings peace to our lives. We, we read, we talk and we read about all this turmoil going on and there's nowhere that we can truly find peace in our life right. except right. that piece of the armor that God gives us. Mm -hmm. So that let, yeah. peace. let's recap. Yeah. Gird your loins with truth, the breastplate of righteousness. Have your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The next one, very important. Yeah. Take the shield of faith because Satan's casting those fiery darts. He wants to make us doubt. Right. Uh, and, and so faith is the antidote to doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Got to have good. faith. That's good. And then put on the helmet of salvation. Where does Satan like to attack us? The mm. mind, our point. thoughts. Confusion. You know, yeah. yeah. Right, B. Confusion. Mm -hmm. And that's what where everybody's at today, it seems how, like. How many gentlemen? I know if I've been through it. I know other people that have guys that have gone through this, the depression, stuff that's happened. They called men, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, men are going through the menopause. <laughs> Men's yeah, menopause. Yeah. Yeah. It's true, though. It happens and right. you get confused. And right. that's where Satan hmm. attacks you. Right. Take us into the next one, B. Take the sword of the spirit or the word of God. So we got to mm. have, got to have the sword. And mm. I, I, it's interesting because Everything else that they're, they're, he's giving us with the breastplate and the gird your loins and helmet, that's like protection. But the sword is the offense. That's where mm. you're going on the offense. And if you look back in, in, the, in the days, in the Roman days, that sword, uh, it, it was sharp enough that it could pierce almost any metal. And so that's mm. what we have to do. And how do you keep that sharp? You got to keep your sword sharp. And that, again, is through immersing yourself in the word and through prayer, supplication. Yeah. You have that and you keep your sword sharp so you'll be able to use that and be, be able to go on the offense, which means 
defending your faith, letting people know why you believe what you believe, having the yeah. word of God in you so that you can express that at any time when it comes up. When somebody asks you a question, you have an answer for them. That's what yeah. the sword is. And we we're talking about, you know, fighting the, the enemy with God's word. Mm-hmm. When he puts those doubts, say, no, I'm standing on God's word. Right. And yeah, yeah we, we've got our armor and we're moving in some weapons here, too. Uh, remember, guys, when we were little, they used to do sword drills with the Bible. They'd give, Loved a, them. That's they'd right. give yeah. a, a, a reference and go. And then you'd look it up and you yeah. stand up and read it. Yeah. But, yep. but boy, that helped us to learn the Bible. You know, they, could you believe John last week? John oh. Hope. So, so knowledgeable. The yeah. Talk about knowing the Bible. That was embarrassing. <laughs> and I didn't think about. Right. I just did a morning cup that's going to come on this week. And I was proud of myself for memorizing Jesus wept. I was going to say, because you used to get that turned around. You yeah. Had trouble I, I, <laughs> in fact, I explained to people how I memorized it. But yeah. uh, I won't get oh. into that now. Yeah, yeah, it's a great technique. We don't have time. <laughs> okay. okay. The one thing to go with the sword, though, is prayer. Mm-hmm. Oh, you yeah. have the prayer, which was saying you, you want you want that knowledge. And so you want to pray and praying in the spirit, too. I mean, let, you want to pray all the time. Um, and what I mean by in the spirit is that you're, you are praying constantly. And it says the Bible says to pray constantly. And you say, well, I can't be on my knees 24 hours a day. No, but it's, it's you can have you could be speaking to God throughout the day. And yeah. anytime prayer isn't has to be this whole this whole written prayer and, you know, this whole wonderful thing that the Pharisees and Sadducees would would spew yeah. out. It's just talking to God and then listening for him because he's going to be answering you and questions you may have or knowledge that you're lacking that you need. He's going to supply that to you. But you've got to yeah. keep in constant prayer. And we, I'd add fasting to that too, Brian. Remember mm-hmm. when the disciples couldn't cast out a devil and Jesus right. said, this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. fasting. Right. I yeah. got to tell you, I'm not a good faster. Yeah. I, I'm just going to yeah. admit it. Man, yeah. it's so hard. You you just start thinking about food and, and you got to focus on the Lord. But, but fasting really does take you to another level mm-hmm. with the Lord to where there comes a time, I mean, I've only done like three or four days at the most, but there comes a time when you don't even want food, you, mm-hmm. you know, because you're yeah. you're putting God first. Yeah. yeah. That, that powerful weapon, prayer and fasting. By the way, go, I encourage everyone that's listening, read Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Right. And now we're, we want you also to read 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10. 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10, because here are some more weapons. Yeah, these are some gifts that the Holy Spirit can give us. And of course, if you're not a Christ follower, then you don't have the Holy Spirit in your life that will allow you to benefit from these. So if you don't, we encourage you Mm -hmm. to become a Christ follower. Believe in him. Let him be your Lord. And then you have these extra weapons that you have available to you to fight the battle that we're seeing every day. But one of them's wisdom. Yeah. And this is something that's almost, uh, I think it's different than knowledge. It, wisdom mm-hmm. that the Lord gives is somewhat a supernatural wisdom that comes into play when you need it. And, and you could be in a situation where you don't know what to say or think if someone asks you something and then all of a sudden something comes to your mind or a scripture comes to your mind that's exactly what's the correct response. And that's the Holy Spirit giving you that wisdom to help come against the issues of the day. Mm-hmm. I thought I thought of this last night. I was watching an interview with Elon Musk, who is brilliant. Oh, yes. I mean, he's yeah. brilliant. But then he was asked about artificial intelligence and can we trust it to make good decisions because it ha- doesn't have a soul. And Elon said, well, I'm, I, I think we might have a soul. I, I'm not sure. And I thought, man, a lot of knowledge. Mm-hmm. But that's where the wisdom of the believer, you know, there's some, there's a soul. Yeah. You yeah. know that there's something deeper than just flesh and blood. Right, right, right. So uh, knowledge, you yeah. know, is we have to have knowledge of <clears throat> the word of God. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, I know a lot of Christians, they read a lot of things other than the Bible. Yeah. And yeah, you can get some knowledge, but there's so much knowledge in here. I think that, you know, was it um, C.S. Lewis said, I I believe in God like I believe in the sun because by it, 
by the son, I see everything else more clearly. Mm -hmm. And and through God, he he saw things more queer, uh, more clearly. And that's the wisdom and the knowledge and godly knowledge and godly wisdom. Terry, you're right. There is such a difference yeah. uh, between yeah. the world's knowledge and wisdom yeah. and what God can give you. Let's face it. He's the creator. He made us. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And the next we move on to is faith. Mm-hmm. You know, we've always said, and Dan, I know you, you, you always say this too. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction mm-hmm. of things not seen. Mm-hmm. And it's true. But in Hebrews mm-hmm. eleven six, the Bible tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. So we ask for God for faith. He will, he's going to deliver it. He's going to help us grow our faith. And he's going to build our faith because when we're when he's, we're going to see things that are happening and learn things through um, intervention with him. That's going to create our faith to expand. Um, put simply, faith is believing in God and, and trusting in his plan. That's what we look at it. And um, even when you don't understand it and can't see it, it's there. It's like my mom used to tell me. I say, how do you know God's real? She goes, I said, I can't see her film. This is when I was a little kid. I, mean, I thought I yeah. had her. And she goes, yeah. can, you, can you see the wind? Yeah. But as soon as she said that, she goes, did yeah. you feel it every time it starts blowing? I go, absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. Absolutely right. You know, guys, the reason I think the three of us are in ministry today is our moms. Oh, our moms yeah. all were prayer yeah. warriors. They were faithful. Yeah. They raised, you yeah. know, it says train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. I got away from the Lord and had some terrible times. But man, because of my mom's prayers, mm-hmm. I think I kept coming back. And she always wanted me to be a preacher. And finally, yeah, <laughs> in my golden neat. years, you know, but all that's three so of us, neat. I think we had mm-hmm. great moms. Yeah. No question about that. Sure. Another thing that is so important is for we have the ability to connect to the power of the God of the universe. Right. Think of that. And yeah. we read the scriptures and we see all the miracles that took place through Jesus' life and then beyond, all the miracles the disciples did. And nowadays we don't think of it as much, but God is still doing the miraculous. Mm -hmm. And we hear story after story of healing and things that have taken place. And more so even in other countries, whether it's because their faith is stronger, I, I can't answer it, but I believe in miracles and the Bible tells us that we should believe in miracles, that all things are possible. And when we need a miracle, we need to believe for it. That's right. John fourteen twelve says, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I go to the Father. Right. Brian, Brian I think we're going to see more miracles as we head into these final days. I think you're right. I think we will. Because you're going to have people out there that they're, they're true believers <laughs> they're going to take that next step that, and say, Lord, I, I, you're, my faith is growing. You're going to you're going to show me as I lay hands on people, as I pray for people that it's not me. It's coming through you. Yeah. I'm yeah. just the vessel and it's going to come yeah. through you. But miracles, I think are going to happen because see, the devil's going all out. Satan's going out to grab who he can. You think that Christ isn't going to? Sit there. Yeah. He's going to let him just do that? No. Right. He's always right That's there. That's why only, we're in a battle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and all we have to hear the person say, you know, I just need you, Lord. I mean, yeah. He's right there. Yeah. He's always there. And Absolutely. the miracles are done to glorify God. The exactly. miracles are done to yeah. draw people to him. Yep. And guys, don't you think like Joel 2, 2 talks about in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. I'm believing there's going to be a great revival mm-hmm. yeah. one more time. Yeah. yeah, it's already started in some places. Mm-hmm. True. And I believe True. it's going to just keep burning. Yeah, yeah, we just look at the things that are happening here, but it's all around the world. I mean, there's some right. big time revival yeah. going on. Yeah. Finally, I want to talk about discernment. It's mm-hmm. a real uh, weapon we can use, and we right. need to pray for discernment because there are so many voices. And But, boy, when you've got the Lord in you, he opens your eyes to some of this stuff going on. It's just pure foolishness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I keep coming back to Romans 1. It says, professing themselves to be wise, they've become fools. Yep. You know how these all supposed learned people high up in these crazy liberal— universities 
they're they're so smart. They're, they have no common sense, and nothing exactly. makes sense. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's happening in our Senate. And it's happening in our our Congress. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's how, how much I, I see these people that get up and make a statement. I'm going, what they say? You know, what, I know. <laughs> yeah. they, do they do? Can they hear themselves? What they're saying? Yeah. It's yeah. just not making sense. No one can define a woman. Yeah, 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 what, yeah. what is a woman? And they're I, 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 you yeah, know. That just, I don't know. <laughs> Well, even back in the Bible times, even the if, if you didn't have the Holy Spirit in your life where you had discernment, that's why Jesus spoke in parables, because right. if the people mm. listening mm -hmm. didn't have the Holy Spirit discern it, they wouldn't understand it. Right. True. And there's many Absolutely. things the disciples didn't. And then finally yeah. they began to. Right. They realized Jesus was the Messiah. And Jesus said, well, Flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. Hmm. They yeah, well, had discernment it, of the yeah. Holy Spirit, and we can yeah. have that same discernment. It actually yeah. says that, too, and they began to see. As I thought, yeah. after all, everything that they yeah. witnessed, and then right. they finally began to see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we've got to gird our loins with truth. We've got to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Mm -hmm. Take the shield of faith with you every day to quench Satan's fiery darts. Put on the helmet of salvation. Keep your thoughts pure. Whatsoever yeah. is good, whatsoever is right, whatsoever is pure, think on those things. Take the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, be in it daily. This is our sword, our mm -hmm. weapon. Pray and fast always. And then our weapons, wisdom, knowledge, faith, miraculous power, discernment, Guys, with all these, uh, we can we can make it through these times. We can be victorious, yep. but we've got to be uh, we've got to persevere. We got to pray. We got to seek God, and we got to finish strong and win this battle. Mm -hmm. They're there for us. That's, right. That's yeah. how we finish strong: is we pick them up and use them. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's been great, guys, spending time with you and just getting in the Word and just talking about these. God has given us, he's given us armor, he's given us weapons, and yeah. he's telling us, armor up, the That's time right. is now. Mm -hmm. All right. right. I always think of that Rocky movie, I think it was Rocky uh, Four, when uh, Apollo Creed's training him on the beach, and he's just kind of going through the motions, he goes, wake up, there is no tomorrow, because Rocky said, I'll do it tomorrow, there is no tomorrow, That's right. it's today, <laughs> today right. is the day the Lord hath made, we need to be about his business, mm -hmm. thanks for joining us, God bless, we'll see you next time for another edition of Finish Strong. Thank you for listening to Finish Strong. For more information about Finish Strong and Fearless Faith, check out their website, ffaith.org. Make sure that you rate and review this podcast to help more people accomplish their God-given purpose so that together we can finish strong.